This episode from Driving with Gloves is very special because it is about a strictly limited Italian sports car from the Roaring 60s. Hi, my name is Cor and welcome to my channel Driving with Gloves. I always drive with car gloves. Your question might be, why do I drive with gloves? And my answer is, why not? How many Bugatti Veyrons were built? They were built 450 in 10 years. So that's an exclusive car and you don't see them on a daily basis. Here you see me with one in Monaco. But are there cars which are more exclusive? Oh yes, there are. The best example is the Ferrari 250 GTO from the 60s. It is said that there were 36 built, although you also hear the number 41, if you count the two prototypes and the 4 liter model to the 250 GTO. In 2013, one was sold for $52 million. Can you imagine? A car was sold for $52 million. From the still existing 33 Ferrari 250 GTO, there are two or three, uh, because one is partly in Spain, here in Switzerland. So it's highly exclusive. Well, thanks to Autofogel and partner in road in Switzerland, I am driving today a car which is far more exclusive. Only 100 were made. Well, that's more than from the Ferrari 250 GTO. But it is also a red Italian sports car. And only 25 are left, so that's less than from the 250 GTO. And only one was officially imported here to Switzerland. And this car. I'm driving today. The front of the car looks similar to the front of the Lamborghini Miura. That's why it was nicknamed Mini Miura. The side of the car looks similar to the Aston Martin DBS. And if you look at the wheels, the Chromodora wheels, they look similar to the Dino 246. It is now time to present to you the Samantha Vignale. After World War II, the Italians took their cars out of their hiding places. The Vignale brothers acquired a severely abused Fiat Topolino. They fitted a new body of their own design, a fact that was soon noticed by the British magazine Autocar. The publication attracted so much attention and so many clients were ordering a car of their design that in 1948 they were able to establish their own Carrozzeria Vignale. These are the early Fiat 1100 Vignale models from 1947 and 1948. International recognition came soon. First, a young and brilliant freelancer, Giovanni Michelotti, was attracted. I mentioned Michelotti already when I did the review about the Triumph Spitfire. Second, after a few victories in several races, the already famous Ferrari replaced their coach builder Turing by Vignale as the coach builder of their choice. Bodies were always produced by hand. Sheets were rolled and hammered into forms and also the finer shaping was done by skilled metal workers judging by eye without dummy.
1960, Giovanni Michelotti, who always designed for other coach builders as well, slowly concentrated on larger projects while Alfredo Vignale took the road of expanding into more mechanized mass production. The economic forces of the late 60s appeared in the end too strong for small coach builders like Vignale. The relatively small scale production, quite labor intensive even for that time, made Vignale cars too expensive to attract the large production needed to survive. masterpieces from Vignale. It's, it's a car built by Vignale based on the Fiat 125. And I think that Vignale did a great job because I think that the Fiat 125 was technically advanced. But drop that ugly. for watching this episode from Driving with Gloves with the ultra rare Samantha Vignale. Don't forget that this car is for sale at Autofogel in Rhodes and although it has only one third of the power of a Ferrari 250 GTO, the price is only one promille from that from a Ferrari 250 GTO. So like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel Driving with Gloves and like my Facebook site Driving with Gloves. Until next time. Thank you.